if your drums are not hitting hard enough, you're probably doing something wrong and it's not what you think. In the next few minutes, I'm gonna show you five essential tips which are gonna make your drum stand out and artists love your beats. So let's get into it. All right, so tip number one is gonna be simplicity. Nine times out of 10, an artist wants something that's extremely simple, just provides a simple rhythm and something that they can rap on. When I think about it, I've never actually heard of an artist pass on a beat because the drums were too simple. But on the contrary, I've heard a lot of cases where, you know, artists just say, oh no, I can't rap on this. This is too complicated. I don't have enough space for my vocals. So they just end up passing on that beat. And also if you think that you need to have complicated drums or you know something that's crazy to have a hit, I'm gonna show you why you're wrong. So let's take for example Metro Boomin, especially one of his latest albums which is Heroes and Villains. So if you take the two biggest songs from that album and analyze their drum sounds and the patterns that they're using, you're gonna see that all of them are extremely simple but effective. So as you heard, the drums on both tracks are extremely simple and they're just doing their job, which is to provide a basic rhythm for the artist to rap along or sing along. And that's all you need. Drums are not the main point of the song. So you don't want your drums overshadowing the vocals of the artist. And an easy way to avoid adding countless drums, which you don't actually need is just make sure that you ask yourself, what is this drum doing? What am I trying to achieve by adding another layer, another sound? And is there any point to it? Now, tip number two is gonna be rhythm and matching the movement of the sample. Rhythm is where a lot of people mess it up. So even if you do the drums the right way, the beat might still sound off. And one of the main reasons why that might be is because you didn't consider the movement of the sample. So samples on their own, they can have more movement or less movement. They can be more rhythmic or, you know, less rhythmic. And that's something that you have to consider while making beats. And by the way, this has nothing to do with the BPM. So I'm going to show you a couple of examples right now. So depending on what type of sample you're working with, you wanna be approaching it in a different way. And here's a rule of thumb that I go by every time I'm cooking up. If your sample has a lot of movement, I wanna keep the drums very laid back and you know, just not too jumpy. And if your sample is very slow and spacious, then you can go ahead and add more energetic drums, more rolls, you know, all of that stuff. So now that that's out the way, I'm gonna show you how I approach both these samples in different ways and I'm gonna play them together with the vocals at the end. Who got a problem? Who got a pants? Who got the chunk? Into the game, fly helicopter. Twenty one forms, part of the couple. Some tough shots. By approaching the two samples in two different ways, the final song sounds balanced and it's still not overshadowing the vocals. Now, the third tip is going to be about the length of your sounds, which a lot of people overlook for some reason, but this directly ties in with the BPM and the type of drums that you should be using. As you might know, the higher the BPM, the faster the sounds are going to play. In this case, if you have a sound which has a longer tail, 
is gonna start clipping with the next sound and it's just gonna crash. So if you wanna avoid this, what I do is whenever I'm making faster beats, I'm using shorter sounds. Or what I do is, for example, I open up my hi-hats and I just set it to cut itself. So by shortening your hi-hats, your kicks, open hats, pretty much everything, that's how you achieve a more bouncy sound. And now on the opposite side, if you have slower beats, it's actually better to use sounds which have a longer tail because that's just gonna fill out the space and the beat more. Also, if you wanna create more bounce in your drums, especially with the hi-hats and the open hats and snares, you wanna be using envelopes. Now, I'm gonna show you an example of a slower BPM beat which I made. And what I want you to pay attention here is how I've used the envelope settings to create a bounce, which even though it's a slower BPM beat, it still sounds fast and bouncy. And actually this beat sold a lot of leases, so artists seem to be liking that beat. It was good seeking. As you saw in the example beat, I always set my open heads and 808s to cut off right as the snare or clap plays in a beat. Small tweaks like that can create a big difference whenever it comes to making a bouncy beat. Alright, so for tip number four, I'm gonna talk about leveling and why producers get it wrong. It's not your job as a producer to mix and master the whole beat. Whenever you're making beats, you should just focus on picking the right sounds that work with the beat. You don't need to add 20 compressors, saturation, and all of these plugins on your master. The reason why I say you shouldn't be doing this is you're just gonna end up creating even more work for the engineer to fix. If you need to make your drums sound good, just use good drums to begin with. Now I'm gonna show you a real time example of a beat that I made and I'm gonna show you which drums are hitting at what levels and how simple mixing beats actually is. So if you want to do something which is going to make the engineer's job easier, what you should be doing is, instead of exporting in 24-bit audio files, you should be exporting your stems into 32-bit files. And the reason for that is, if you have a clipped sound and you drag it in your playlist and you hit normalize, the sound is going to return to its normal 0 dB level and it's not gonna sound clipped. But on the other hand, if you take a 24-bit audio file and you drag it in, even if you hit normalize, it's still gonna sound clipped. So remember, next time you're exporting stems, make sure that you checked off 32 bits. All right, so now let's go to tip number five. You should not be wasting time trying to fix bad drum sounds. Your drums should sound good right out the box. If your beat doesn't sound right, most of the time, it's gonna be a problem with either the mixing or the drum sound selection. Now, a lot of people have been asking me about the drums that I use in all my videos. A part of why I made this video today is to drop my free drum kit. So if you're looking for high quality free drum kits, I just dropped my free drum essentials kit, which is gonna be in the description for free. Also, I have two other free kits. So if you're looking for drums that which are more trap focused, you can go get my official drum kit. And if you want some drums which are more R&B-ish, then go check out my deep dive free drum kit. And now that we've covered all the essential stuff such as leveling, good sound selection, and leaving space for the artist, you probably want to know how to make your drum stand out and, you know, develop this unique signature sound. So after breaking down a couple of songs produced by big name industry producers, I've actually noticed all these producers, they have a specific sound which they keep using over and over and over again. Now, this might be a specific 808, a specific hi-hat or you know just the way they mix their drums now the first example is take heat and his signature hi-hat sounds whenever you think of a take heat beat you just know that his hi-hats are always going to be mixed wilder than usual most producers don't have they hi hats loud i just have mine loud as hell like you just gonna hear them that's one of my signature sounds you hear them hi hats you know it's my beat even though that's something that's very subtle, it still makes it a signature sound. Now, another producer which built a signature sound based off one drum sound is Jetson Maid. As we all know, he uses his 808s in a very particular way, which creates this crazy bounce. And every time you hear an 808 jumping octaves, you just know that it's probably a Jetson Maid beat.
that's like one of my signature things like in every one of my beats now let's talk about the second thing which makes all of these big industry producers drums stand out so much and that is rhythmic movement or how you use your drums so a lot of producers focus on making a good clean drum pattern but there's actually one thing that you want to be doing and that is adding stuff which is going to make your beat sound more unpredictable you know just surprise the listener the best example i can think of is wheezy his beats are famous for the bounce they have he uses a lot of short snappy sounds as i mentioned if you want to have more bouncy beats you want to be adding shorter sounds and by doing what i mentioned and what he does that's an easy way to make something more unpredictable and musically satisfying and also another good example of someone who has a signature sound based off unpredictable drums has got to be pyrex whipper Now Pyrex Whipper blew up because he was doing all these crazy rolls in his hi-hats which made it sound very unique and also he was using a lot of rim shots in his drums instead of snares and claps which at that time in rap wasn't really common and in his case he didn't invent hi-hat rolls or you know using rim shots but the way he combined both of them made it so unique and so outstanding that he blew up because of it. Now lastly for the third point which arguably is the most important part of creating a signature sound is the way you arrange your beats and how you build anticipation in the track. So the best example of that is the four count intro, which is signature to Pharrell. Or if you think about someone like Metro Boomin, especially heroes and villains, you probably notice that he's consistently switching up the drums, the transitions and the way the beats flow in and out. Before you know it, it's a completely different song which catches the listener off guard. The point I'm trying to make is you can add so much energy to a track by making different switch ups, transitions, you know, just giving your beats a whole story. It's more about creating a movement and, you know, just building anticipation in the track. So the takeaway here is you don't actually have to reinvent the whole wheel. All you gotta do is find one good sound and make it your own. And that's how you develop your signature sound. So yeah, if you found this video helpful, make sure to subscribe hit the like button and all the free drum kits are going to be down in the description. So until next time.